Okay, here we go. All right, I think we're streaming. Okay, let me just check. See, I gotta, I gotta go over here and I check, and I look and see if we're streaming. Okay, and uh, uh, we are, and we're out there public and all of that. Good, terrific. All right, we're ready to go here. Hi there, everybody. I'm Alex Bennett. This is our, uh, this is our little pop-up show that we do on. Uh, on Mondays, and we really kind of enjoy okay, it, you know. Here we go. Wait a minute. Oh right. boy, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Okay. I got to turn that down. There we go. See, you heard here, my. And I there's me. Uh, always something goes wrong. Hey boy, we got a lot of people waiting to come on. So let me, without further ado, uh, let's see here. I'm supposed to. Oh, there we go. Admit all. There we go. We're going to start admitting everybody. There they come. There they are. There's uh, Steve Bender, and there's Mark Chisholm, and there's Rick Sheckman, ladies and gentlemen, and the uh, fabulous Andrew Deutsch, and who knows who else will join us. Oh, wait a minute. Edward Berger is still trying to join here, uh, but uh, maybe he just isn't his computer right now. Hello, everybody. How are you? Fine. <laughs> Fine. Love the Zappa shirt, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. my hero yeah um uh, how many of us have gotten our second uh, covid shot so far raise your hand rick i thought you said haven't gotten have gotten oh <laughs> there we seen. go okay i haven't seen yeah but i'd have to bring a cane and a wife carrying a cigarette well <laughs> Uh, we'll discuss that when she comes on about how we managed to jump in line to the front of the line, which was kind of amazing because I didn't expect that was going to happen. Oh, no, I thought you were going to be there for three hours. Really? And when you called me, it's like, oh, I guess you're calling me from the line. You're like, no, I'm home. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, what happened is when I got there, well, I, I, I want to wait for Marjorie to come on here. Then she can help me tell the story. Um, oh, here, admit all. Oh, boy, we got a lot more. We got Edward Berger trying to join again. I don't know what his problem is. There's Edward. There he is. Yeah. And here comes Charlie Wallace. And uh, I don't know, the other Edward Berger that's trying to sign on isn't signing on. Oh, this is Stuart me. Oh. Did you do, did you sign on from two different machines? No, I. Uh, what happened? The window closed, and I don't know what happened. You can get rid of the blank one. I, well, I can't. Oh, I can't. wait a minute. It just, sure. it just disappeared. Right, good. Yeah, okay, it, good. it just disappeared. Okay. Um, but I want to wait for I, Marjorie. I got, my so first, she... I got my first shot at the Javits Center on Friday. Yeah. I was amazed. I had a 5.30 appointment, walked in the door at 5.30, and with the 15 minutes after the shot, I was out at 6 o'clock. Well, that was a state-run facility. It's incredible. The I, I, I went the first time I went. I had to wait two hours in line yeah, yeah. for the shot. And then this time I got there and there was a, uh, there was a line that was long enough that said to me, got to be at least an hour. Okay. At least an hour. And, uh, um, but we, I wish you were here. I'll tell you the story. I'll screw her. Um, so we get there, we get there and I look at the line and I go, okay, Marjorie, we got to, Go to the back of the line and we'll wait. And I, and I asked a woman, I said, how long a uh, wait will this be? Now, Marjorie had something go wrong with her knee. It was just kind of from the weather. It was hurting and everything. So I said, bring a cane. All right. So she brings a cane yeah. with her. So they see her with the cane and they see me and they go, oh, well, you're seniors. Come with us. And they move us to the very front of the line and say, you go to number seven, you go to number eight. We should. That's good. Now, we got there early. I was supposed to be there at 420 to get my shot. And uh, we got both our shots, waited 15 minutes to make sure that we didn't blow up like a stuck toad and went home. And I was home by 420. Yeah. So. Right. Oh, well, wait a minute. Here comes Marjorie. She can give her, her part of the story as well. Yes, Mike. Well, I, my only question is, is do you think that the 
do you think they would have identified you as seniors without the cane or was the cane the difference maker that made this thing happen? Well, it certainly didn't hurt. What is what is that big fluffy thing in front of you? It's my knee. That's your knee. Get your fluffy <laughs> knee out of the way. No, it did. Uh, I was just telling him the story about what happened to us. What happened? About your cane. Oh, how far did you get into the story? I, I got into the whole part of the story. I was waiting oh, yeah, for you and back taking home. your time getting on. So I- Did you I, tell him about the joint? Well, no, that that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the plot thickens, does it? <laughs> um, um, it was, uh, it was a, um, uh, but we, we got him. Do you think we got him because of the cane or do you think we got oh, him? Oh, absolutely. Because, and, the, and, the, and the bandage around my knee. Yeah, well, they said seniors. Though. No, they, they said old people. Did they say old people? Yes, they did. <laughs> did they say old people? They said old people. <laughs> So, so to be clear, they didn't say geezers, right? No, no they didn't know. <laughs> this is the geezer line. This is the. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, we did. We didn't have to wait. It was just right to the front. Go to that place. Go to that place. Jab in the arm. Goodbye. You know. And then yesterday, you were sick. Yesterday. Oh my God! Did you show him the picture? No, I don't. I can't show a picture. I could show it. You could show it. I, I don't know if it'll show up well, but but it will. If you want to, well, we don't know. Well, here it I is. Take a picture of her sleeping in her COVID-induced coma. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Not how I felt the day after I got my shot. Was that oh how you felt? <laughs> well, today I'm I'm kind of fatigued uh, still, uh, uh, but. I I didn't get the aches that she got. I got you know. Oh my god! I the... couldn't move. Wow. I couldn't move a position in my body. Everything hurt. Yeah. And, and it... my doctor, I had to go today for a shot of gel under my kneecap, and he said, and half his clients are like me, and half of them were no problem. He said but... I probably had a touch of the flu. Now, Shecky, you had what? Tell them what what your after effects were from the this is from the second shot, folks. The uh, next day, night, I had 100.4 fever. Oh, wow. Just went to sleep and it was normal in the morning. Yeah, yeah. You tend to get temperatures though, right? I mean, I've known you to call no. me. Go out ahead. Oh, no, no. I'm no? normally like 97.6 or oh, something. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm normally 97.6. Right now I'm in the... Well, I'm, however, I'm not over, I'm not over normal. He checks his temperature about once an hour. Not anymore. You still do. But they also say now 98.6 really is in quote normal. Yeah. It's what's normal for you. Yeah, but you know, Shecky, he doesn't trust any of it. He still takes his temperature. Well, and he has three different types of temperatures. He has three different types of machines. No, and he uses all of them. I have two thermometers, one that runs high, one that runs lower. Yeah, the one that's the head. And the, then the I got head. the 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 heady thing. Yeah. So. Well, you're not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But anyway, so you went and you got your second shot before me because, you know. Right, I got it on Thursday. Yeah. And and you got it on Thursday. And uh, did you have any after effects? You had 104.4 deg degree temperature. Oh, uh, just other than the arm being sore, which is normal. Mm-hmm. And then I was running a little temperature, so I just turned out the lights and went to sleep. But the <laughs> next day, how did you feel? The day after? Fine. Wow. Really? Uh, today, I, I like to joke. If I still had a job, I would have gone to my job. I thought I was dead. Did you feel, did you feel a, a bit fatigued at all, even after the second day? I feel fatigued every day nowadays. <laughs> so. oh, okay. All right. But I can't tell the difference. No, but today, I was really fatigued more than usual. But no, no. If I had, as I joke, theater tickets... If I had a job to go to, if I had whatever, I would have done it on well, Friday. I mean, I'm, I'm fatigued, but I'm doing this show. You know, I mean, there are certain things. Yeah, but do. Alex, you yeah. only have to walk 10 steps to go to that room. <laughs> well, you only have to walk 10 steps to your job, too, okay? <laughs> I work harder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. You work very hard. 
<laughs> we need to get one of those bells for round two. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Andrew, you haven't had a shot yet, right? No, I'm not eligible yet. And Steve, you had one, right? He's not eligible yet. Don't you love people that say that to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you <laughs> want to turn had, around and I've, go, fuck you. Well, yeah. no, I've had it offered that I could jump the line and I was like, it's not my turn. And there's people who, you know, essential really workers. Needed, and, like old people. Geezers, yeah. Or politicians. <laughs> the geezer line. Uh, yeah. but, but no, you, but it's, you know, there, there were people that, that we decided were essential workers that like got us food and did all those things while I stayed home. Yeah. So I think if I jump the line because someone gives me some privilege, when those guys yeah. haven't got their shots yet, that would make me not who I am. So exactly. I would probably I'll, feel I'll, the same way. Yeah, I, I, I'll wait my turn as much but, as I'd like to get it. If the woman in the front of the line goes, you're old geezers, come with me. No, she said, you're old people, aren't you? <laughs> you're old people, aren't you? And I go, yeah. And she goes, come with us. I didn't feel guilty about that. I felt insulted, I didn't but either. I didn't feel guilty. No, Everybody was old people <laughs> when well, I got mine. Well, not necessarily. I mean, there were a lot of, I saw some younger people there, probably like, like healthcare workers. For our first like, shot, there were a lot of young people there. When yeah. when they found out at the home, Alex, did they take away your jello privileges for that night? <laughs> yeah, <they did. laughs> Just asking My for a friend. Alex is a friend of mine who oh, keeps complaining he can't get a COVID shot because he doesn't want to get on a bus or call a car service or get on a train, he wants it like two blocks from his house. Exactly. Get it. And it's like, go blank yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he was offered it and stuff, right? He was offered a first in shot, but they wouldn't schedule the second. Well, it was now you get the first shot, and number one, you either just walk away or deal with the second one after you got the first shot. Well, when you get your first shot, it's reported to the city that you've got. Yeah, and you first. set up your second shot based on that. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's like I read this on Facebook. Someone who's a friend of mine, and it's just like, and I won't respond, but you just want to go like, you're a blank and blank, blank ass. Exactly. Let's just say it. Well, I mean, I, you know, I'm sure if I were like uh, 60, I would not jump the line. I would feel guilty about jumping the line. Mm hmm you know? Yeah, but um, Mario Cuomo is going to have the shiny quarter in a day or two. <laughs> over 50 can now have the shot. Well, yeah, or, you know. It, He's it, 63. Open up all the schools. Come on, gang. I, because well, because, because, I, insulted, because I insulted a woman. That at right. Aqueduct, which is one of the super vaccination sites, 75% of the people getting shots there are not from the five boroughs. Oh, really? really? Oh. Wow. Where are they from? I thought we had to show proof of pregnancy to get on the line. But maybe I'm wrong. Long Island. What? Aqueduct is Queens. Yeah, I think here, if they ask you, you have to prove that you live in the area. By area. They didn't ask, but if my they brother, ask. My brother, who is totally computer illiterate. Yeah. Went in line without a reservation and stood there in Florida. In Florida, in Florida, stood there for four hours, and then they ran out of vaccinations. I said, "But you didn't have an appointment," so he doesn't know the computer. So but you can make a phone call. I'm going to do that. I grant you. Yeah. Up on you, but you can, make, you can make, you make a phone call. They made that available for old farts who don't know how to use computers. Right. Uh, and. Uh, uh, but you could probably go online and sign him well, up. Well, that's what I was thinking of yeah. doing, just setting it up for you. You have year. all his information. Yeah. Yeah. I could have him on the phone while I'm online. They have not made it easy. I mean, how many different forms do we have to fill? Oh, out? my God. You know. Well, I told you, that. they didn't ask me if I was a, was a mortician when they started giving me all those, are you X, Y, Z, A, B, C? Right. Well, there's there's one list of questions they have. This is the great part. This is, shows you how the city thinks, boy. They got their brainy here. They had a list of questions, about 20 of them, and you had to answer yes or no. But the only thing is, there was only one question there you would probably answer yes to. So rather than say, uh, make them all uh, uh, no's, 
they made them all yeses and you had to make them to no's. And I mean, it was just that kind of confusing stuff. And, and one of them was, are you a mortician? <laughs> was it? I didn't even <laughs> read it. Yeah. Really? Well, well, you would think actually that that's not a bad question. If you were a young person and you worked in a mortuary with all these people who died of COVID, you should get the shot. Yeah. yeah. As, yeah. as silly of a thing as that is to ask, it's actually not that dumb. Yeah. yeah. Or what they could say is, what is your, what is your uh, occupation? Uh, no, what is your reason for doing this? And you go, I am over 65, or I am a mortician. Or I am a health worker. Or I work in a supermarket. It, or it's I like this whatever. Long for, it goes on forever and ever and ever. And then once you've done that, they send you another one saying, oh, by the way, fill out this form before you go. And they yes. go, out another a form. So did time. any of you have to pay for the shot? Did you? No. No. Did they ask for your insurance? Never even asked. No. no. Okay. Well, they asked if I had insurance, and I said, yeah, I got Medicare. And you know what? They asked if I had insurance, and I just said no. Uh, no, okay. doctors they gave they the wanted to then, And they GIF or JPEG of your Medicare card yeah. or something. It's like, screw you. The first doctor yeah. that gave me the first shot, he helped me sign up for the second shot when I was there. So he said, do you have insurance? He said, right, no, because it's going to be another four pages of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the instructions said to bring my insurance card, but nobody asked to see yeah, it. Nobody, nobody, ever asked. Yeah. Uh, nobody ever asked for proof of age. I had my passport in my pocket, <laughs> my driver's <laughs> license in my pocket. Right. I also was only yeah. eligible. I was eligible because of hypertension, but they didn't ask for any proof of that either. Yeah. Is that a comorbidity? Or I yes, smoke a lot. I was nobody, surprised. I'm sure nobody ever, yeah. you know. Well, they asked yeah. me if I was a cigarette in your pocket, you know. They asked me if uh, on one of these forms had I been radiated. Oh. Uh, and uh, I just said no. I didn't want to say yes because then I would probably have to fill out something else <laughs> that would tell them why I have to, I was radiated and, you know. How and then they'll say you're ineligible for the second shot. No, they, they, that was, they wouldn't make it in me ineligible, probably make me more eligible, but I wasn't doing it for a comorbidity. I was doing it because I'm over 65. So I didn't need any other excuse beside that. But I mean, it's just, they have made it difficult for people to, to it, and they had a thing, uh, where was it? We saw on Sunday morning about trying to get through all the different steps they have actually this one organization that's formed themselves to help old people and they go online for them and do the signing up, you know, because so you know, why they make it so difficult for old people. Yeah, I'm trying to get an appointment. It was crazy. I mean, they released on Friday morning. I had already got my, had my book, but Friday morning, they released 7,000 slots at the Javits center. They were gone in like 40 seconds. Yep. Wow. <clears throat> But the efficiency know. at that place was just remarkable. It's a military operation. There's nurses, yeah. there's guardsmen. Yeah. They get you to every station. Everyone's nice. And it just well, there's no reason. You know, there's no reason there should be a line. No. Because, because uh, they give, they, you have to sign up for an appointment, and they give you a window. And that window uh, has probably maybe 10 people for each window. So if that's the case and they're doing it fast enough during the day, they're not taking a big lunch break or something. But they don't they don't seem to care or check what time you come either. Like my right. appointment was for 5:30. Oh, hey, I was I was home. Time. I was home by the time my appointment was set right. to start. So they don't seem to care about that either. Yeah. 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 I think like a good tattoo shop, they could save money and just use the same needle on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> As long as you're the first. <laughs> Don't give them any ideas. I got to tell you, the guy, who, the guy who gave me the shot was terrific. And he's just pleasant as hell. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they do give you a speech like, you know, this has not been approved by the CDC for general use. This is just for, I don't know, whatever use. Emergency use. Emergency yeah. use. And so I went, yeah, I know that. So if I die, it's, you know, it's your fault. Um <laughs> But I mean, I, you should it, tell them if I die from this, I'm going to come back and 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 sue, and sue you. you. Yeah, <laughs> the guy was really nice, though. And no, everybody was really, really nice. They're all nice. Everybody, yeah, was yeah they all are. Yeah. I mean, my first shot, he helped me sign up for my second. Oh shot. my, yeah, but then he forgot to have you push. Yeah, the but button. he told me not to put. Do you have insurance? He said no, put but no. He, but he didn't tell you to push the button that says 
now register me. <laughs> well, and, and so we tried. had to come home and do that. And luckily, we got something on the same day. In the afternoon. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't have to do anything to sign up for the second shot. They just gave me a card with the date and time. Oh, with really? me. Yeah. Really. Uh, yeah, they gave me a card right. with the date, and then that day they gave me the time. Right. Same still, thing. Oh, wow. hey, you want no. two thirty or four thirty? I go. Yeah, two thirty. Fine. Yeah. Maybe oh, maybe they changed, maybe they've changed the way they do it. I I had a rather ditzy woman the first time I did it. I I'm yeah, fact, but I, they didn't ask me. I'm questioning whether they didn't they write even, it on me when my second shot was. Yeah, I think maybe the state and city are different the way they're doing it. Well, so no, I, city Rick is with with the city. I was city. Huh? I was city. City. Yeah, you were city, and they they set up your next appointment for you right there on the spot. Yeah. And it's on they my card. For us, Alex. Huh? Yeah, they didn't do that for us. Didn't do that for us at all. And then they had a big sign in the in the waiting room that said, uh, "If you don't get an appointment before four weeks, don't worry. You know, oh. maybe more than that, <laughs> or whatever." But they should have signed us up there. Uh, and uh, this whole operation we were at, they moved the. Uh, we were supposed to go back to our same school to get our shot. And uh, I went over there to see why they had changed it to the other one, and they closed it down, the one about a block and a half away. And the reason they closed it down is it's a grade school. And, and, they, and they were opening up. They're opening up again. Okay. So that's why they changed over to the high school, which isn't opening up yet. Uh, right. I was, at a high, I was at a high school. Yeah. So yeah. I hadn't opened up yeah. for so, in person learning yet so we just went <laughs> we took a lift and went up there and you know and uh, at javits your next appointment is three weeks to the day of the first shot well you had uh, four weeks to the day of my first shot you yeah, had uh, what, you had the weeks. pfizer then huh yeah yeah we have we're moderna people moderna, so. it was four weeks from the day of my yeah shot. yeah we're five and a half weeks i'm giving a shout out to all my moderna bros. <laughs> you know um uh, <laughs> what do you think of the Johnson and Johnson? Would you take the Johnson and Johnson? Yeah. I would do it, but I'm not sure about it. If that you know, they did make that hair. baby powder. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, I'm wondering. I'm wondering. I grew up in the generation. My, after I got it. my shot, he put a band-aid on my arm. So I'm wondering when they <laughs> do, do the Johnson right? and Johnson, what kind of band-aid is it? Curate? Curate? <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> it's Kirkland brand. Kirkland. Uh, Everybody should take whatever they can get. But you take exactly. whatever you can get. Yeah. The, thing about, uh, the thing about the difference between the uh, Johnson and Johnson, they say 72% efficacy. Okay. Uh, quite frankly, all these drugs have 20, 72% efficacy on the first shot. Okay. It's the second shot that's the booster. Well, they just don't do a booster. That's all. You know. And it's a different technology. It's not We're an RNA. All it's a, it, it, it does have a bit of the flu in it, right? Well, it's it's made. It doesn't have the flu in it, but it's based on it. There's yeah. no there's no actual flu virus in it. This is a, this is some kind of something that goes into your system and says, "Here's how you go fight this guy." Yeah, that's right. It yeah. it, it multiplies yeah. the DNA but, but it, that's in the cells. Yeah. I but heard. It, yeah, I I heard that it's it the way it's not that it's a seventy two percent efficacy. It depends on on who's getting it, but it has a hundred percent no death right. on on the yeah. test because it'll a hundred percent no hospitalization. Yeah, yeah. Which you know at the end of the day is the most important part. No. Well, this is the no the, one million dollar. The, the uh, what do you call it? The um, um, Moderna and the um, Pfizer both have that same kind of efficacy. I mean, they pretty much uh, after you get the second shot, there will be no hospitalization and no disease in fact they found in all the shots they've given out and they've given out how many millions of shots now that nobody has been hospitalized because of the coronavirus they may have gotten it but they you know uh, that, that's the most important part yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I you know I've, I I feel better you know about the whole thing I feel safer uh, you feel the same way, Shecky? I mean, you, you feel a certain amount of security you didn't have before. You yeah, but I'm still going to wear the stupid mask. You know. Oh, yeah, of course you're going to wear the mask. For a year. Yeah. Well, the, the reason thing, for that right? is they don't know, but you still may be able to spread it to somebody right. else. 
Well, you, I guess in theory, I don't give a damn if I spread it to someone else, but I'm still going to wear the mask. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> because they're wearing women. Now, in theory, yeah. let's just say I'm not wearing a mask, but you're wearing the mask. Could I spread it to you because you have the mask on? Because yes. No, you, you, you can. Oh, if you have the mask on, no. Saying if the if person you don't have the mask on, uh, you can have uh, a asymptomatic version of it that's in your nostrils or whatever, and you can spread it. Supposedly, they, they think, but they don't know. They, there's a lot they don't know about all of this, you know? And you uh, can get it more than once. You can get it more than once, I guess, yeah. You, you can still come down with it, but you're not going to be hospitalized. That's the thing. You're not going to die from it. And that's what the beauty of it is. And that's why you should have it. And by the way, I honestly think you, you're pretty much protected after the first shot on the ones that are the two shots. Uh, but the reason you're going to have two shots is so Moderna and Pfizer can make more money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was listening to Dr. Fauci speaking about it. And the reason they're still recommending the masks, they're doing research to see how much of the virus remains in the nasal cavity of people who've had the the and injections and they're saying the initial data shows them that it's significantly reduced after you've had the shot that that your your sinus doesn't become a, a great home for the virus to remain yeah so they can if they but can if, you, if that, you had the virus in there to begin with you would have had the virus everywhere wouldn't you well that's where it goes in but what he's saying is that if you've had the if you've never had the virus the vaccine there's a high level of it that accumulates in your sinus and they're yeah, testing but you also who you, have the virus yeah. in people who have the vaccine and a sign of the virus. And they're finding that the level is significantly less. Mm -hmm. The vaccine is turning the nasal cavity into an, a bad habitat for the virus to, to, to remain. Well, I'm just looking forward to the day that I can get back to normalcy and I can divorce Marjorie. Yeah. yeah, but then she's going to keep the apartment, and you'll be in the Absolutely. other room here. I'll be, I'll be Absolutely. in your other room there. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I got a basement apartment you can have, Al. Uh, really? No windows, but you know. So yeah, actually, I don't want to see the really good news today. What? what? The Golden Calf's wife got her COVID shot before they left the White House. Yes. Yes. Who? Trump and Melania before they left the White House got their That's shot. Done. And what was she, maybe 50? Or yeah. he's 50, you know. But that's yeah. okay. I mean, he's the president. And did it on oh, come on, he was on his way out the fucking door. No, I think they said they did it on January 3rd. Yeah. Right. But he already so, yes, had COVID, so he didn't but need he it. Wasn't, you know, you gotta, yeah. They both had it. You got to keep him healthy so he had to do his time. Yeah. And he started a riot. Oh, now, okay. I, I, wonder where he gets, <laughs> I wonder where he gets his second shot. Same place you're using that other thermometer you're not talking about. <laughs> I think he gets a second shot in four years. Yeah. So a friend of mine told me something shot. interesting yesterday, That's which right. I, had, I don't think any of us ever thought about. Well, you His wife went in for her shot. She had had shoulder surgery and couldn't get the shot in her other arm. And they were like, well, we're not going to inject you. And my friend said, what if she was a paraplegic? What would you do then? Oh, yep. then we do it in your leg or your rear end. He goes, fine. Do it. Maria Elena, pull up your, uh, you know, your pant leg. And they did it in her leg. Yeah. yeah. Alex, Alex, I'm reading an article here. It turns out that Trump is going to get his second injection at a Planned Parenthood clinic. So he can also find his next wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, she thing. redid the prenup before she went down to Washington. Well, if you listen to MSNBC, the thing they're complaining about is that Trump got his shot and then he never told the public. He never made a big deal out right. of it. He's 74, which is he's within the realm of you yeah. should be getting it. His comorbidity is he's a fat fuck. Yeah. You know? Uh, no, but he, uh, the fact is that. Um, uh, he uh, 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 didn't go out and tell the public that he was having it. And, they, and then they, ran around without a mask on still, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it was so anti-believing COVID was dangerous that he wouldn't even tell people he got the shot, but he never turned it down. Well, yeah, I saw only five minutes of him yesterday and he was taking full credit for the vaccine and, you know. 
Oh, really? Tell, like, he was telling everyone to get shot. All no, the he, for you know, it, props to him that he, well, I don't think he did much of anything to hasten the oh, vaccine. I think what hastened the vaccine was greed. Okay. Yes. And the fact that everybody yes. wanted to be the first one on their block to have the vaccine and to be able to get it on the market and make money off of it. Yeah. Uh, so you can't, you can't say that he hastened anything. In fact, Pfizer wasn't even um, given. Well, they're a German name. company, aren't they? Or maybe I'm no, mistaken. No, they, they're in New York. Germany. They're in New York, believe it. Upstate New York. Upstate New York. They, uh, they, you know, the, the, the uh, um, they didn't uh, uh, even get public funding. They didn't get funding from the, the White House or whatever. So, you know, this idea that he had anything to do with this. And then once he got the stuff, he wasn't distributing it properly. It was just sitting on the shelves down in Washington. Well, the worst part was they said they had a backup. And when Biden yeah. came in, they had no backup. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing they to send no out. The, oh, yeah. the cupboards were bare. Is yes. Little, how they this, this team that Biden put in place did more work in, in the first two weeks in office than the entire... Uh, Four years of Trump. Yeah. Well, let's not talk negatively about Donald but Trump. Because then we have to about talk about it. He's talking talk about how bad Biden's first month was. <laughs> did, did you see the stage at the QPAC? Which, by yeah. the way, it's QPAC. It's QPAC. The, the Nazi no. symbol? Yeah, the, the, the Nordic Nazi symbol that the stage was shaped as. And they asked the organizers, and they said, we didn't realize that. It wasn't on purpose. Oh. That yes. was uh, really? I didn't notice that. Yeah. Look, look, oh. Yeah. I read an article about it too. But yeah. It kind of looked strange, however, when he was standing there and where where the podium was in relationship to the audience. It was very weird. Yeah. Very weird. But uh, anyway, I I uh, I'd love to be able to go down there and steal that Trump statue. Here, oh Alex. God! Without I think, God they, I think that could be worth something. Oh. Can you see that in my screen? Yeah. 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 It's probably <laughs> on eBay already. Yeah. Do the shape here and the shape on the collar. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. 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 Don't tell me I, that was an accident. Yeah. Absolutely not. Are they calling it QPAC now? No, that's what I call it. It's no longer the GOP <laughs> either. It's the GQP, the, the G Grand Q Party. Well, I don't, you know, I mean, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to get into a big political discussion here because that's not what we do on Mondays. Yep. But I mean, I still can't understand why they're putting all their eggs in one basket, in the Trump basket. I mean, they won his voters. On, my, I, they my, won my, his voters. My, well, my feeling, if I was a, a Republican wonk, is that I want to stay as far away from Donald Trump as humanly possible because he's got stank all over him. No, but they won his voters. <laughs> yeah, well. yeah, they're 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 going to split their vote and give advantage to others to to win office. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. It's it, there. There's. I think. I think the, the last time I looked, and I, I probably have this number wrong, was around eighty thousand Americans as of last week have changed their registration from Republican Independent. Yeah. Wow, the number's probably yeah. significantly higher by now. But if Trump's not arrested and he's the nominee against Kamala Harris in 2024, things are going to get really frighteningly scary and ugly. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. Well, you know, um, maybe after losing two fixed elections in a row, uh, he—I think he said something at CPAC like, "Well, you know, we, we're going for our third win." Yeah. yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, he really, I, I don't, did you think he believed? No, he's going to want to be the Roy Cohen of 2024, where mm -hmm. he's going to put in place who he thinks, you know, right. well, he was, will allow him to keep running his phony businesses and stuff. Yeah. Well, we're talking about politics. Because now he needs to make money. We're talking about politics and we probably shouldn't, but... Uh, what, what, what do okay, you think? Okay, so um, what do you think of the whole that woman last night? <laughs> that woman last night was okay. It was okay. Uh, I like the new Superman show. I, I like that a lot. No, I was I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, but as I keep saying to you, let's see three episodes in when you decide you don't like it anymore. Oh, okay. Let me see here. What, what it, it, to begin with? Um, uh, this may come under politics, but what do you think of all the problems Cuomo's having now? Uh, <laughs> I think he's going, I think he's going. Who's only he's joking? 
<laughs> Would you have when I asked when I, when I asked how large her pussy was, I was only joking. <laughs> uh, if, if it's proven he did it, but how about how about we stop, you know, canceling people before there's an investigation? Yeah, right. that's I mean, it's pretty it know. seems pretty obvious, but at the same well, time, okay, the guys, okay, we're, we're all guys here except for one woman, and she's not really a woman, she's my wife. So anyway, oh. um, <laughs> let, let, let me ask you this. You heard kind of what Cuomo supposedly said. Do you find anything horribly wrong with that? I mean, to justify the outcry that's going on right now? But didn't the women basically tell him to go fuck himself? Yeah. Well, it's like the women that were watching, which are called handoff. He said, well, you can um, leave or you can oh, stay. Oh, this is what you're talking about, Louis C.K. Yeah. And they he said, would, it, would any of you off. mind if I started jerking right. off? But I, I, would agree, I would agree with you, Alex, if it was 10, 15 years ago. But this, if, but recently, you got to be an idiot to talk to a woman, a young woman like this, knowing the climate you're in. Yeah, right? yeah. If he told me 15 years ago, he flirted with his secretary. Yeah, now but still, said, still, okay. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. 15 years ago, it wouldn't have been wrong, but now it's wrong. Yeah. yeah. But now, how is it wrong? It's not right that it's wrong, but it's wrong. Listen, I was brought up all my life to treat women with respect and to, you know, not to do things and so on and so forth. My father was very much a, a gentleman, okay? And so I knew there was certain behavior that I would not engage in, all right? Um, but when did that uh, stop? I, I, you know, I don't think that he did anything except say stuff to them. Yeah, and if the woman yeah. were receptive, he would have fucked her. Listen, so therefore, I, he uh, was. Uh, let me ask Marjorie the question I asked her earlier. If Cuomo had come on to you like that, what would you have done? <laughs> I would have sucked his dick because I have a little crush on him. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about your friend with Bernie Carrick? You know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, no. What I what I said once is that that what what is sexual harassment? What is sexual harassment is if uh, uh, Rudy Giuliani does it, uh, it's one thing. And if Paul Newman tried it, it would be another, you know, <laughs> I mean, or, or, or George Clooney. Yeah. Right? You know, what if, I mean, what if, it's a matter of discrimination. It's what a if, matter of receptiveness, I think, here in this. One of them did say he kissed her, right? Well, why is she waited yeah. till now to know. say this was uh, grieving to me? Yeah. Is this uh, well, because Warren is running for either borough president or mayor of New York in the primary. <laughs> well, there's think... one that's running for borough president, and the other one, she simply was interviewed by the New York Times, who was look, or maybe it was Vanity Fair. I can't remember. No, Times. What, Times, uh, uh, who was looking for a story. And the woman really didn't even want to talk about it that much. And then she said, yeah, he said this to me. He said that to me. I felt uncomfortable with it. Next thing I know, I'm not in his office anymore. I'm working somewhere else. But the... she requested the transfer. Did she request the transfer? Okay. So, you know, I mean, it's an old story for her. Yeah, you you know, know, after Al Franken, if you're the governor of New York, you got to Al Franken, I feel the saddest about. Al Franken was screwed over. Unbelievably he could sad. never have done it. So, you know, they're bringing a senator from New York is one of the women who pushed Al Franken yeah. out of the Senate. Yes, I know. Nothing to take back Cuomo. And she should have never That's done That's why it. when it came time for me to go vote for her, I voted for like the Libertarian or somebody like that. You know, I can't forgive her, her for that. I'll, like, I'll never forgive her. her job because she got appointed because I think someone else went to jail or something. Yeah. I think the Al Franken brand. thing. I think the Al Franken thing is because Al is so classy. Like I think Al probably, if Al decided to go fight, he probably had a fighting chance. Like, but he's just it. so classy. I... That it's like, no, you know what? I'm out. By the well, way, I was like, like Al. Did you um, like, did you read the New Yorker profile of him post after it happened? It's um, it's taken him a he, he plunged into very deep depression. I mean, he was betrayed. Yes, I heard. Betrayed that. by everybody. It's it's mm -hmm. unconscionable. Yeah. yeah. His new he, podcast he, he's is a, he's a bench, right? He threw himself on the sword for the party, but he shouldn't have, I don't think. No. Yeah, no. I agree. You know, it's like, and Alex, you're not talking about this, you know, Woody Allen and his phony documentary. Unbelievable. You know, oh, by oh, these oh, documentarian, I you know. agree. 
totally. I'll tell you what's funny. Was, Franken did an interview that I saw the other day. Recently, which recently. Which he was talking about, uh, talking about Ted Cruz. And okay. he said that, uh, who was it was giving the speech? It was it Kamala Harris maybe that was giving the speech? And she came to him to help write some comedy for the speech. And he said, uh, this was the time when they were having trouble with all the, the cruises and the backing up of toilets and things like that on board because of, of problems. And, COVID. And, but no, but uh, <laughs> backing up of toilets. And they said, so you, 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 know, what, you know what the most uh, um, something uh, cruise there is? Um, and they went, well, to uh, uh, an average person, it's a carnival cruise. And to most Democrats, it's a Ted cruise. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. So, then, so later on, before she's going to give this line, which she's already changed to soften it, all right, she goes over to Ted Cruz to tell him what she's going to say about him. And so Franken said, I couldn't help but want to go over and hear what went on. And Cruz was then trying to say, well, why don't you change it to what's the most challenging Cruz? <laughs> And she's thinking, that's not going to make it funny. And she's going no, let's not forth with him on this. And finally, Franken gets into the fray. And he says, well, listen, uh, this might solve the problem. I've done a rewrite on the joke. <laughs> um, what is the shittiest cruise? <laughs> <laughs> Years ago, Al Franken said, I like Ted Cruz more than any other colleagues like Ted Cruz, I hate him. Yeah, he said that in this thing. He said, "I uh, yeah, <laughs> but I hate Ted Cruz." <laughs> uh, let Charlie Wallace excuse Ted Cruz for us because he lives in Texas. And now for the apology <laughs> for all him. of Texas, here's Charlie. There Wallace. is no excuse for Ted Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what if, you know? I lived in Texas and I loved Houston. I that was one of my <laughs> favorite towns that I ever lived in. Um. It was good for white people back then. And anyway, um, uh, it, it, but my, my problem is, what is it about Texans that, number one, would, would elect that governor of yours? Yeah. You know, Bob Wheelchair or whatever his name is. Uh, and I claim he can walk, but he's using the real wheelchair. <laughs> uh, uh, and and um, Ted Cruz, I mean... You know, they had a chance to elect somebody other than Ted Cruz last time who probably would have Beto O'Rourke, who probably would have been a pretty good uh, yeah. senator. He would have been a very good senator. It. What, what is, what's going on down there? And why are you still living there? <laughs> I can't get out of my apartment. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's a problem. But I mean... You know, it's just amazing that they elect all these terrible people. I mean, your governor has just done a terrible job of What about their lieutenant governor? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's worse. Look, He's even worse. Who's, yeah. who's that? What happened? Dan Patrick. Yeah, he just, he, he, he's even more like QAnon type. Charlie, you know? tell me the story. Which story? About him. <laughs> Well, well she's asking Patrick. why Dan Patrick. Is Dan perfect. Patrick was the one that said, "All of you seventy-year-olds ought to be willing to go out there and die and get COVID because you're already, <laughs> you know, over already the hill." Oh yeah, Dan Patrick's the one that said, "You know, you're you're going to die anyway." Yeah, so you better go and save it, save these young people so they don't have to go out and die. Yeah, <laughs> a little does he know that at our age we'd like to live as long as possible. Okay, yeah. you know, because we know our days are numbered. You know, it's on. Um, well, you guys, you know, after fighting World War One, you know, we, we figured you're ready to fight. Again. <laughs> you know what I saw? I was watching, you know, I like YouTube, so I watch YouTube, and, and they have these endless things about the stars who did this and stars who did that. And they did one stars who are all over 90 years old. And I looked at, uh, watched it, and I'm amazed at some of the stars that are over 90 years old. Gene Hackman is 91. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen him in a movie lately. Have you? No, you haven't. But he's 91. I mean, well, and oh, a ton of other people. I'm trying to remember them all, but I can't. Yeah, Dick Van Dyke, Norman Dick Lear. Van Dyke is what, what, Dick Van Dyke is what, 98? Mel Brooks. Five or six. 
95 or 6. Uh, uh, Norman Lear, who they had last night on the Golden Globe, Eight. is 98. Well, did you, uh, did, did you ever see on the HBO thing Carl Reiner had done about, you know, people in their 90s? It was, a, you know, he profiled famous people. Well, he said he liked to look at the newspaper every morning to the right. obituaries to make right. sure right. he was dead. Morning, you're not in the newspaper, you're not dead. Right. right, that was the title of the show. He looks, the first thing he does is look at the obituaries to make sure he's not in it. And then one day he was in it. There was a big picture of him because he was with someone who died. And he opened the obituary page and there he was. Yeah. But, it's wow. Norman, but it's Norman Lear, Carl Reiner, and an athlete. Mel all these Brooks people in there. is probably Mel 90. Brooks, yeah. Mel Brooks is like yeah. 93, 94 now. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, uh, uh, you know, we do like to think that we're going to live a little longer than just 81. Okay. I'll probably make it to 82. <laughs> but your mother was a hundred. My mother was a hundred. Yeah. Everybody says, you know, you're gonna live to be a hundred because your mother was a hundred. And it, so I, your dad doesn't... died when he was in his fifties, right? Yeah, my, fifty-nine. Yeah. So I mean, that's no guarantee of anything. Oh, so you, you average them out, and you're gonna die tomorrow. I think my mother <laughs> died at a hundred just to piss me off. You know, mm -hmm. I mean. She went on and on and on. And finally, you know, when she finally died, everybody goes, how do you feel? And I go, really? well, maybe there's another parking spot available. Something like that. <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. Am I, am I supposed to mourn when my mother died at 100? Oh, she was so young. Oh, I could only call her one more time and have her go, what did you say? You know, I mean... I had her for more than anybody usually has their parent. Anybody have a parent here? It's a hundred. No, no. You know, so I was very, I was very lucky, you know, or unlucky. It depends on how you look at it. Well, there was that period. She tried to steal your job at Camel. It came <laughs> out. Yeah. She tried to steal my job. It, that was a great story though. I got to tell you a great story. So I'm working at Camel in San Francisco and my mother my boss, see, she did like a, a speech at a roast for me. So my boss thought, you're so good. Let's give you a show. So they gave her a weekly show called Ruth Bennett's Top 10 Countdown. And she did this How three weeks. She and they, they wrote it for her. And there was a producer for it. And they coached her through it. And all of a sudden, I went through this thing with the station where I quit the station to go to another station. And now lawyers were going back and forth with each other. Oh, we're going to sue them for leaving. We're not going to sue them. You know, you're not. You can't. A lot of fighting going on. I talked to my lawyer one day, and he says, listen, I got a question. Uh, your mother still is over at KMEL doing her show. I said, yeah. He said, uh, I would advise you not to talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know, that might make sense if it were like a person I worked with, but this is my mother. Okay. <laughs> so I think I will talk to her. <laughs> and it was like, you can't talk to her because, you know, you, that's the enemy now. <laughs> Wait a minute, you know. How old was she at that time? And I think they didn't fire her just to piss me off. I mean, that, that <laughs> was part of it. What? How old was she? How old was she then? 80 ish? I think she was in her, no, I think she was in her late 70s. It was around 83, I think, 84. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And she died in, uh, what, 2004, something like that? I remember correctly, 2005. You know, again, you couldn't get on the Letterman show, but we actually did a pre interview with her to be a guest. Did they? They did, didn't they? World's oldest disc jockey. Do you know that who else was trying to get her on? Howard? Not Johnny Carson. Really? Yeah, they called to see if she would do it. And um, um, they were thinking of her. Oh, yeah. I mean, all I could get on was like, you know, the Channel 5 evening magazine. That was about it, you know, but she could get the, the Letterman show and the Tonight Show. Why did you guys turn her down? I don't think she was all that interesting when they pre-interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, she could be pretty funny. 
You know, by the way, I was watching, I was watching uh, the, some old Letterman's again. They have this uh, one thing of this guy, Henry, what was his name? J uh, oh, old Henry. Old Henry. And, and they, one episode after another of them, of him firing him right on the show. You yeah. Know, and having this yeah. old man walk away. Now, I told you before, if you remember, he's in Casablanca. Were they for real? The movie firing? Casablanca? Yes, he was an actor. And his father was a very famous actor in German silent films. Wow. But anyway, every, every time this guy was on. Oh, his name was Paul Andor. Yeah. Uh, 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 what's his name? Would, would, would uh, fire him. Letterman would fire him, and then the whole audience would boo at Letterman. Yeah. And some of them were just hilarious. But, 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 but Mr. Letterman, I'm near my end, et cetera. Yeah, I know. The line always was, I'm only a month before my retirement, <laughs> my pension. Yeah, but his father worked with Fritz Lang. He was wow. in all those major German silence in the 20s. Really? Was he in Metropolis? I don't know if Metropolis. You'd have to look up. But no, Paul Andor also did films in Germany in the 20s, early 30s, before he got away from Hitler and oh, you, emigrated. Oh, you see, his father was in the Fritz Lang pictures. Mm. His father Yeah. Okay. was in the Fritz Lang, a lot of the Fritz Lang pictures. Boy, I'm telling you, that, that was some funny stuff. Yeah. But uh, was one day he looked at me and goes, I'm going over to MoMA Museum of Modern Art because they're running one of the films my father was in. Mm. Oh. Ah. So did you ever sit down and talk with him? I'm a, he must have been fascinating. No, I never talked to anybody. <laughs> he never talked to anybody. Nah, I never talked to anybody. What about Hank Aaron and Mickey Mantle? Could I have your, nice to meet you. Could I have your autograph, please? That was it. Would you take a picture? That was it. Yeah, yeah. My famous interview with Marlon Brando. Pardon me, Mr. Brando, can we talk to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know. But I did have Hal Roach in my office for two hours, so, you know. How many here know who Hal Roach is? That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. You know what Natalia told me today? What? When, when, when um, they, when, um, Jack, her, her husband that died last year, he was a producer and a director, and um, he was very friendly with Marilyn Monroe, and she asked him out, and he said no, because he was married. <laughs> well, I got the... I, I mean, if you're married to what, was it Carol Baker or Carol Lindley? I was yeah, he, Carol. Was one one of them. Carol, he was one married of them. to Carol Baker. They were, all, they were all cheating on him. They were all cheating on him. Both marriages. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, well, you remember you remember who Carol Baker was, don't you, everybody? Oh yeah, remember Baby Doll. Baby Doll, you know. Um, I mean, he married the biggest piece of ass in Hollywood at the time. And he was loyal to he was loyal to the women he was married to. Well, he always talked to me about being very close to Marilyn, and he talked about it so much that I began to think that maybe they did have something going. No. He said he turned her down. Natalia said, Boy, that's... He said to her that no, he didn't didn't go to bed with Marilyn Monroe, even though she asked. What? Well, I guess if she asked, that was the compliment. Okay, <laughs> fucking her would simply be the follow through. I mean, look at her marriage list. She was a bit of a dirty girl from the wrong side of the tracks. Yeah, yeah. Um, and didn't seem to clean up her act very much when she became a star. No, not whoops, whoops. What happened? I lost. I don't know. You lost the picture. We just have your name now. Yeah, there, oh, there I am. There you are. You know, so Marilyn Monroe. Maybe I'm. You know, who cares? Yeah, yeah, uh, but he was very close to Marilyn. That I do. Know. Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. and he, uh, he because uh, I think where do you meet her at the actor's studio? Maybe yeah. I think the actor's studio. Yeah. Actor's studio. Yeah. Um, but, uh, um, you know, that's the Arthur Miller years. Well, you know, also, that also, listen to Jack. He was the last guy to see James Dean alive. That's right. Yeah, I cool. don't believe that story for one second, but he, I don't care. He said he saw him outside the studio. And no, 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 no. Chateau Marmont. Oh, really? Oh, I heard it was a studio, but then again, I may have gone. No, that's hmm. when he called... 
the studio at one in the morning to tell Marilyn Monroe he was dead. No, he was in a screening with Marilyn. It was Elizabeth, was it Elizabeth Taylor? Yes, it was Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, it was Elizabeth Taylor. You're right. It was Elizabeth yeah. Taylor. It was in a screening and they were watching Rush the Giant. Giant. And uh, he, a guy comes in and whispers something into Elizabeth Taylor's ear and he, she screams out, oh my God. And then she said, James Dean is dead. Uh, but he supposedly, I don't know, might have been the studio, might have been Chateau Marmont, but he had his... No, he, he told me the story was Chateau Marmont. He had this Porsche, and he said, I'm going up to up north towards San Francisco. And then Jack supposedly said, don't do this. You're going to New York next week with me to either do a play or something. Yeah, yeah. Don't, or if you do it, don't get in a race. I think that was the other thing. But he took off, and that was the last uh, Jack or, or anybody saw of uh, James yeah, Dean. Bad or, driver. Huh? Bad driver. Bad driver. Yes. Yes. Uh, that the name of it. Kind of like Tiger there? Woods last week. You know. Uh, that's sad. It's not sad. Look, I wish the man very well. It's not sad because now they're, it's coming out that he fell asleep at the wheel. Oh, really? Well, is that what happened? Okay. Well, it was all. Well, it's not official, but. The whoever's been investigating is kind of saying, yeah, we seem to have some either from a black box or whatever that he fell asleep at the wheel at eight in the morning. Well, which he, is, he, he was up yeah. awfully er, he was up awfully early. And I but figured he was, always are. Uh, what I figured maybe he was up all night. Mm -hmm. And he was speeding. And look, I'm not again, I'm very happy he's okay. So I'm not wishing him ill. Yeah. You know, and I don't wish Lady Gaga's dogs any ill. Thank God they were found. <laughs> She's out. How many? How many? How much money did she put up? Five hundred thousand dollars. Five hundred thousand dollars for the return of her dogs. Boy, that says you've got fuck you money, doesn't it? <laughs> you know. Uh, well, she has no children, so the dogs are her children. I I guess you know. Uh, but um, um, who was the person they paid it to? Some the woman who found them tied up to a um, parking lot, you know, a parking meter. Yeah, because I'm sure they whoever shot that fellow and stole the dogs went, oh shit! What did I do? Gaga's dogs? And <laughs> she's, put, she's put a five thousand dollar reward out on me. I think I better just park these dogs at a parking meter. Five fifty thousand. And I'm sure the dogs mm -hmm. were tagged in their ear or wherever you tag a dog. Yeah. That if they try to sell it to you, you're going to take it to the vet who's going to figure out it's Lady Gaga's dog. Did, did they establish the reason why that guy was killed was because they want he they wanted he wasn't the dog, killed, not he killed, was killed, but shot killed. He's, because he's they want, shot because they wanted the dogs. They now they're referring to it as quote a mugging, so I can't answer that. Is but I think they want. I think I think because apparently those dogs sell on the black market for like ten grand each. French oh, bulldogs, really? no. So I think these guys, and again I don't know this, were driving through Hollywood and saw a guy with like three of these dogs, and are thinking like, eh, good dogs? score, let's go get those dogs. Three of them, but did they found two of them, uh, right? Right, the other one got away. The other one got away. Oh, oh, they found that dog just one immediately. Immediately. How often? But it was just you know this poor fellow was fucking the dogs, and a couple of thugs you know saw a guy and said, "Hey, wait a minute, this is going to be a quick score. Let's go grab the dogs." Well, now that I think about it, having a, a dog that's worth uh, uh, ten thousand dollars is again showing you've got fuck you money. You know? But they're not they're not worth that. I got a buddy who breeds those and they get about thirteen hundred, fifteen hundred dollars for the puppies. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. And you wouldn't know if they were champion French bulldogs or somebody walking them. Yeah. And how often do you hear a story of a dog walker getting shot for dogs, no matter what the value? Yeah. It had to well, she was in an exclusive neighborhood and probably thought that they'd have money on them. Mm. We've heard nothing today from uh, Ed Berger. And then he just waves. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's Edward. resting his voice. He's got a Pixar deal tomorrow. That's <laughs> right. That's right. I'm saving my voice. He's saving his voice. All you would have to do is walk into any of those animation houses and open your mouth, and you would have a part. Okay, I'll try that. 
<laughs> Time for Rugrat Seven. That's Sorry. right. <laughs> Back with that voice, you could almost take work away from Gilbert Godfrey. Ah. <laughs> the next Sesame Street will be Burton Edward. Yeah. Burton Keeping Edward. the ass back up. And Mike Chisholm hasn't said what's going up on in Canada, but now we're running out of time. So I'm uh, doing well. You know what? Well, just uh, it's if, if it was February 29th, which it isn't, it would be my anniversary. So there you go. Oh, so oh happy your... anniversary. Yeah, happy anniversary. Congrats, man. Anniversary of what? My marriage to my wife. Thank oh, you for I see. Day. Okay. I appreciate How that. How many oh. years? How many years? Uh, well, this is technically nine, but technically we've you know, only had one leap year since we got married. We got married on February 29th, 2012. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because um, um, right around the time you proposed, I believe. Yeah. Um, uh, because when I, uh, when, when it's oh, my I wedding anniversary, that, I treat it like it's Yom Kippur, you know. <laughs> Atonement. <laughs> Sing, say the Kaddish and do all of that. That's a Jewish joke. I'll, uh, boy. you know, boy. Anyway, hey, listen, we run out of time today. This is nice. It's always nice. I just enjoy it. It's just a bunch of friends talking to each other. And oh. <laughs> Rabbi Andrew. <laughs> Let's see that again. That was for you, Al. <laughs> Do that again. Yeah. And you can move too. Right? Yeah. I can drink. I can drink water like a like a, a good. Why, why, why don't you do a Jewish prayer or something? You know? I don't know any. No, you don't know any. Then take get away. Get that thing off of there. Anyway, thanks everybody for talking to me. I'll go, I'll really appreciate it. And we'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it again. <laughs> we'll do it again next week, uh, right here. Uh, thank you to Mike Chisholm. Thanks Rick Sheckman. Thanks Andrew Deutsch. Edward Berger. Uh, That's right. Uh, so Charlie Wallace, thank you as always. Marjorie Miller, who plays the part of my wife, and uh, Steve Bender. Everybody wave goodbye, and we'll say goodbye to everybody else. We'll see you bye. here next week. Okay, bye.